Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hello everyone. It's Len again. So as of late, I've recently picked up some books and they're all books that I've been dying to read and they've been on my wish list for some time. So I'll be discussing and hauling these books today. And I'm grateful to say that this video is brought to you by Barnes and Noble. Shout out to you, Barnes and Noble, for being the OG. Barnes and Noble is currently having one of their biggest sales of the year. It's their 50% off sale and more than 400 titles are currently marked down at half price. And there's nothing I'm more passionate about advocating for than being a reader. This sale ends on March 4th, so don't hesitate to go out and pick up a novel or two. So whether you're an avid reader, or you're not really a reader, or if you're trying to get back into reading, this is a perfect time to go out and pick up a book and fall back into love with reading. So yes, I have picked up some books that I do dearly want to talk about. So without further ado, let's dive right in. first book, the first, the first book I have here today has been an anticipated novel of mine since it's been announced. I still have so many emotions over this book, I recently finished it, and that book is King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. Lee Bardugo wrote the Six of Crows duology and the Grishaverse trilogy, both which are one of my favorite fantasy series and worlds in general. The moment she announced that she was writing a novel with Nikolai, who appeared mainly in the Grishaverse trilogy and had a couple of cameos in Six the crows. I I was completely on it, okay? I love Nikolai. He's one of my favorite characters in the Grishaverse trilogy. His storyline and his development when it ended had me wanting for more. King of Scars is deeply rooted in a fantasy world and in a magic system that was established in the previous two series, so I do very much recommend reading those series first before diving into this one. I'm still reeling over the ending. Like, I'm not mad at the ending, okay? There's some people who are seriously mad at the ending, but for me, I'm just, I just, I just want more, you know, and you have to wait a year for, for the next book to come out and I'm not sure if I have, I have enough patience, I'm not sure I'm... <laughs> for those who have read the Grishaverse trilogy and Six of Crows, if you're interested in the little cinnamon roll that is Nikolai, pick up King of Scars, okay? Pick up King of Scars. The next book I have here is a book that I promised to myself I would read before seeing the film adaptation, but I didn't, and that is Beautiful Boy by David Sheff. I'm currently in AP English, and at the beginning of the year, my teacher gave us a list of books that we should read, and Beautiful Boy was one of the books on there. And since I'm an avid fan of Timothy Chalamet and Steve Carell. I thought it'd be killing two birds with one stone by reading the book so I can see the movie and also for the requirements of my AP class. Beautiful Boy as a film was moving. I was a little bit disappointed with the film, but nevertheless, I cried a lot. So I am now here wishing to cry some more by reading David Chef's memoir and what it's like to be a father to a drug addict. I'm not sure if you're aware, but there's a little bit of an opioid epidemic in America right now and I feel like this book is pertinent to not only those who are in addiction but also those who have people close to them who are addicts and I can't wait to see the beauty that I saw in the film be in David Chef's initial words in which the film was adapted from. Also, look at Timothy, he's so cute. Ah! Boop. The next book I have here is from an author who I love, who I met at BookCon last year and died because she is such an amazing writer and she wrote one of the most influential stories of my young adulthood and that is Angie Thomas with On The Come Up, her second novel and I'm so glad to finally have this in my hands. The Hate You Give, you've all heard of it. It's stellar. You've probably seen the movie. You've probably read the book. And I'm really excited to see what Angie Thomas has to say in On The Come Up. This book follows Brie, who is a 16 year old and a aspiring rapper and artist. Her dad, who was in the hip hop and rap industry, died right before he made it big. So she grew up with these huge shoes to fill, but breaking it in the music industry is as hard as ever. I mean, it's not as easy as being a SoundCloud rapper, okay? Brie has to worry about her financial life. She has to worry about school and how she's being treated by her peers. And one day she funnels all this frustration into her first song, which goes viral on the internet for all the wrong reasons, sparking a controversy that 
forever changes the trajectory of her life and her career. I'm hyped to read this book. I love the genre of hip hop and rap. I love music in general, and I can't wait to see how Angie Thomas takes Bree's story and probably will blow me away. You know, what's, what's new? Might as well drop the mic now. The next book I have is Becoming by Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama? Her so heavy, getting Oprah dollars. I'm really excited to see her story and how she grew up and became the mother and wife and first lady she was. A lot of people just tend to think of her as Barack Obama's wife or the person who was the first lady to Barack Obama, but she is much more than that. And I'm excited to read how she became the woman, the amazing influential woman she is today. The next book is a novel and it's been on my radar for a long time, but I've never had the chance pick it up. And that is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. Is it Acevedo? I don't want to be pronouncing that wrong. Please excuse my pronunciation if I pronounced her last name wrong. I know how it feels. I'm so sorry. Simona lives in a Harlow neighborhood under the strict household that is her pious mother. She often feels that she has to keep her thoughts to herself and that she's not able to freely express everything that she wants to say. She instead writes her feelings and her thoughts into poetry that she all keeps in a leather book. And then one day she's invited to join her school's slam poetry club where she's able to express herself in ways that she never thought she could before. And this book kind of just follows Yamada as she goes throughout all these changes of being able to now express her thoughts and her feelings to her relationship with her mother, to romance, to becoming a woman. It's all about how Sirumada learns to find and use her voice. I've heard nothing but praise, so I cannot wait to really just cry some good tears, feel some good emotions. And the last thing I have here is from an author whose book I read last year and was blown away by and she's also someone I look up to as a person and that is Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's and her essay We Should All Be Feminists. I think this book is very pertinent and relevant to our time because I think feminism has taken on an entire new atmosphere completely and I know Adichie's perspective on this is something I definitely want to be able to experience. This is actually a transcript of one of the TED Talks she gave and I've watched her TED Talks before, like the danger of one story I do believe or a single story. And I'm excited for this quick little read because I know it's gonna give me so much more insight and a wider perspective on why, well, we should all be feminists. Once again, thank you to Barnes & Noble for sponsoring this video. And if you're interested in buying these books or perhaps another book, be sure to check out Barnes & Noble's sale before it ends on March 4th. Thanks for tuning in and watching me rant about books and why I love books and why I think you should read books and why I love these books. Happy reading and have a lovely day, morning, evening, wherever you are. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!